So who is uh, new to DNOC? Who is first time attendee of DNOC? Okay. Uh, those who are first timers, who is neither running a facility, nor an internet exchange, nor a network, who is not running, all of you. Then probably, as you are new to DNOC, then perhaps you also have not yet heard of PeeringDB, right? So what is PeeringDB? So PeeringDB um, basically is a database where you find all the information I just talked about. You find information about networks, you find information about internet exchanges, and you find information also about facilities. And basically, this is the crucial information you need if you want to peer or if you want to interconnect. Definitely, the internet is made of networks, but this is not everything. Networks have to interconnect, and where do they interconnect? Typically, either direct interconnects, but it's more, um, or it's better to meet in facilities, as when you are in the facilities, you are able not to only meet one network, but a lot of more. And it's also quite efficient not to do always direct peering, but to interconnect to an internet exchange. And this is the reason PeeringDB was built, to have all this information in one place and nightly uh, stitched together. What so PeeringDB itself as a database is already around since 15 years or even longer. And roughly four to five years ago, people found out that it's really crucial for the interconnection industry to have this um, PeeringDB, and that was the reason to also found an association uh, which is based in the US. There is a board. I'm also a member of the board. And we also have members and almost everyone can become a member. You only have to have a record in PeeringDB, and you only have to subscribe to um, the government mailing list. And then, bam, you are already a member, and you can have a say, you can vote, you can become a director, and so on. This is also quite easy. The board does not do the day-to-day -day work, we come together in a conf call once per month, sets a direction, the strategic direction, decides on where peering DB wants to go. But for the day-to-day -day work, we have four committees. This is the admin committee, which more or less is a support department. Uh, I'm also heading the support department, and I'm happy to also say that Henrik is here. Henrik is also a member of the support department. Uh, we have roughly 10 people in the uh, admin committee group based all around the work, which do the day-to-day -day tickets. We roughly have 30 tickets per day. Most of the requests are requests for new networks, facilities, or internet exchange points. We look at that, look that the data is right, and so on and so on. Next off is the uh, ops group. So. The, the database itself has to run, of course, on a hardware, and this is the ops group who takes care of that. Then we have the outreach committee, which is fairly new. The outreach committee goes out, takes care for presentations, looks what people want to hear, say what, um, at which events we want to go, and what we also are now looking for, not only to give presentations, but also what we want to have is workshops and tutorials, because what we have learned from people is that they find peering to be very useful and really would learn to more, learn to more about it, how it works, how I can use it for my automation, and so on and so on. And last but not least, in peering DB, we have the product committee. And the product committee, more or less, is what in a typical company you would call product development. The, pr the product committee, however, takes the input from the users. So we are using GitHub 
to collect all the information. We use GitHub both for bug reports as well as for feature requests. Then we are channelizing the, the input, thinking about discussing with the users what they meant with their feature request. And then if it's a bigger one, we have to uh, ask for a quote for implementation. We have to go to the board, get approval, and then finally implement. This is a little bit of the statistics. So um, when we founded or set up Peering DB as an association, half of a year later, we also completely rehauled Peering DB um, from a back end and soft and front end. And since then, you s can see that we really have a big take up in usage of Peering DB. Peering DB itself, the usage, does not cost any money, it's for free. Please register if you have a network facility internet exchange point. Keep your records up to date. Use both. There's a graphical user interface. There's also a nice API. And you don't have to pay any money for it. Cost is recovered by sponsorship. There is a different sponsorship levels. If you think it's worthwhile to donate to PeeringDB, feel free. $2,500 already make you a sponsor. This is a list of the current sponsors. And now I come, I guess I will skip this a little bit because I run out of time. I already talked about how feature requests work. This is also already covered by. So we try to have releases every one to two months, both for bug fixes as well as to have new features. So what I would like to talk about now is, in May, we did bug fixes uh, because of a security update on Estus found in a sec uh, um, security audit. And we did this security audit because we wanted to make the source code public domain, which we did last week. So since last week, the source code is public domain, and if you want to contribute, just check out on GitHub, work on it, enhance it, find bugs, and so on and so on. And the second one I want to talk about is internationalization. This was also um, the, the reason I, I asked my introductory questions, whether uh, I should do it in German or not, or I can do it in German or not. So what we introduced, so the, the code itself was prepared for internationalization, but PeeringDB, when we came out four years ago, was only available in English. Meanwhile, it's also available in Portuguese. And we are also working on other translation. So the translation in German has been done. You are able to check it out on better.peeringdb.com if you want to contribute for other languages. I've shown the process how to do it, just to go to GitHub, open up a ticket, say you want to have another language, check out the files, do the translation, and then you are done. Thanks goes to Stefan Funke. Are you here? No. Stefan also contributed to the German translation. So I said, it's already there. Go to better.peeringdb.com and you find the German translation. There is how it looks like or will look like in German. I already found one bug. And that's it from my side on a short update on PeeringDB. If you have any questions <laughs> or remarks, please do so. I'm around the whole evening as well as tomorrow.